before we get into the real conversations, the I finished Gotcha Man two. Oh. But the thing is, it does. It once again, it doesn't really feel like it ended because, um, I was checking to see. Well, okay, when did Gotcha Man F air? It literally aired like a like the next week of when part two ended. Oh. Either that or or two weeks later, but still, it just didn't feel like a. So, I don't know, it, it looked like it was going this one direction, and it looked like a climactic thing, and the end is like, nope, I survived. Oh. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but, man, I, I think I figured out the secret of why Gotcha Man 2 focuses a lot on Joe, the condor. Why? Okay, so the first series is called Gotcha Man, you know, it's the first one. The sequel is called Gotcha Man 2, so maybe... <laughs> the first series is about Ken because he's G1, and the second series is about Joe because he's G2. <laughs> Maybe, but I, I swear, man, they gave Joe too many episodes. <laughs> it was too... Even I was thinking, man, I think Joe's getting a little too much screen time. <laughs> a little too much. Too much, but I'm like... But I like Joe, so it's not entirely bad. <laughs> in that quality, but, yeah, like, Ken the Eagle actually had the least amount of things to do in that series, ironically. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, man, well, you, you had your, you had your stuff done in the first anime, now second one, no, but the third one, the final gotcha man, Ken the Eagle might get something to do because he gets a sword. I think it was called, like, the Fighter Saber or Fighter Sword, I forgot what the actual name is, but I gotta wait till July. For the video release. And then I'll find out where Gotcha Man goes. Like, how does it really end? <laughs> does it actually have an ending? Or is it just like, yeah, we'll just uh, <laughs> fight the next guy. Oh, and actually, they they actually um, made Gel, Gel, Sandra, Gel Sadra a more... Um, well, basically, he wasn't a waste of, of a character change compared to Barkatsu. Okay. They, yeah, they do something with him like towards the very end, but it was like pretty emotional. It was like, oh, oh no, I didn't want to feel sad. <laughs> Cause See. yeah, yeah, but Gil Sadra is not nowhere near as competent as Berkatsi though. He's just like he still is evil, but he's I think he's a bit more incompetent than Berk. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean Berkatsi was like not the most dependable guy either, but. I don't know, I guess he was a little more evil, <laughs> or a little more, you know, like, uh, he, he know how to get back at the Gacha Man, and while in part two, Gel Sadra was more like, you rule the day, Gacha Man! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no English voice, but I, I think that's what he would sound like, because he, he, he kind of speaks in Japanese, like in this, um, sort of like how Wiss speaks. No. Something like that, but only a little more, a little more hammy. So yeah, because it, it, it kind of sounds like he's speaking like with a fish bubble or something like kind of thing with it is sentences, something along those lines like uh, gotcha man. <laughs> I, I do miss the dub though, but so I'm wondering like, will this ever get dubbed, like in the future or not? I don't know. Or will Sensei Filmworks do something new with Tatsunoko? Like, will you guys get Infinity Force? That'd be a surprise. Infinity Force. Yeah. Uh, Infinity. Oh yeah, so I guess we'll, before we talk about, you know, the big, 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 big thing that we want to talk about since last week, we need to talk about, like, the, the Tiger Man's double, the Berserk, and the two Academias. Oh yeah, shit, I didn't read anything today. <laughs> Fuck. Well, there goes yeah, I didn't read any chapter either, because I was busy last night, so... Well, there goes that topic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but little... Ah, shit, I didn't even see the last episode of Little Witch either, now that I think about it. Holy fuck. We didn't talk about Little Witch last time either, but I did see it. Yeah, yeah, I, I did see the one from two weeks ago, I guess. I don't know, I'm confused with the time periods on this thing. And then the upload date and whenever I edit them, whatever. But yeah, the, the last episode that I saw is when that new witch shows up and then, you know, they're running out of magic and then like, oh, I got these new technological devices that creates energy and magic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and poor, and poor, um, shiny chariot, you know, she had to go get energy for nothing. Yeah. Why 
why you're doing that to the best girl. Yeah. I don't know. Then Akko was just like, yeah, I'm going to join the worker on some strike. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... And that's pretty much all that happened. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Well, that topic didn't... Actually, not much happened in Tiger Mask Double either, now that I think about it. I'm actually trying to think what did happen. It uh, was... It was, um... I know Tiger Mask fought somebody, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, it was King Tiger. <laughs> there you go. Oh, right. Yeah. I was really hyped for that episode. I mean, it was, it was a good fight, I guess. Yeah, but we know nothing about King Tiger. He never said anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, like... Not even like some smack talk, man. No, he was just growling and kicking, and then it looked like that Tiger Mask broke his leg, but I'm not sure. It kind of got back up pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. However, like, I mean, it was somewhat brutal, but like, yeah. It just... Well, the animation actually dropped a little bit in quality, which kind of surprised me because, like, wow, we, didn't, we haven't had a uh, drop in quality for a long time, so I guess that's good. Yeah, see, that's the good thing with Tiger Mask. It's pretty, it's pretty consistent. Yeah, animation wise, and then um, yeah, at the end of the episode though is where it's leading up to something where Tiger Mask is actually working with Tiger's Den now. Oh yeah, that episode. Yeah, he signed the contract. Like, oh shit! Yeah, yeah, he's with, with yeah, he's with the Miracle dudes. And, oh yeah, but the Miracle, yeah. Yeah. No but once again, fucking Okada is like, all right, I'll take care of this, and then pff, nothing. <laughs> it's like, it's like, why, bro? Unless the next no. episode features the actual fight, which looks like it's going to be four on four. We'll see. They hold true to that. Yeah, I wonder how Kevin's going to feel about this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fucking A. Where could the plot go? Because, I mean, there's like, he's still not ready to fight Tiger the Great. He's not on his level. Maybe he's gonna be like ringing bell. Where he's just gonna like work under Tiger's grade. Oh, eventually become something he's not proud of. Oh god, it, it might end that way. Well, I would kind of like it if it did because the, the original Tiger Mask does end on a tragic note. Also, so even when he does defeat the bad guy, you know, the first Tiger the Great. But in this one, being Tiger the Great, the third, maybe it's going to be three times the, the damage. <laughs> He's three times the tiger. Oh, actually, you know what I think would be kind of cool? What? Like, uh, you know, with Tiger Mask, uh, on his shoulders, he, he wears, like, the mask of Tiger the Dark and Tiger the Great the third. Oh. Yeah, like, that could be part of his cape. <laughs> like, you, this, I beat him. <laughs> Some Neptune man shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's true. It's a good thing Neptune man is not in this anime. <laughs> not. You know. Demasking everybody. Magnet power minus. Magnet power plus. <laughs> then cross the bomber. Yeah, Neptune man's wrecking shit. I haven't. Now think about. It, I haven't looked. And any Kanika Man material for a while, so maybe there'll be something out by now. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh, yeah, was that everything? Oh, yeah, wait, Berserk, Berserk. We haven't talked about that. And I'm trying to remember what happened. <laughs> what happened in Berserk? I know something happened, but I can't remember. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm actually going on Wikipedia right now. <laughs> Yeah, because we can't fucking remember, even though it was just a few days ago. I'm like, shit, what did happen to Berserk? Because Berserk comes out tomorrow on my time. So... Yeah, I think it's like the night for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. It was mostly Griffith on this one, on his Neo Ban of the Huck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was Griffith. And was there any cool fights or the other it, it was just like a few. They were just showing off a lot of his army. And, you know, right. that and Griffin's right. doing his charismatic thing where... Uh, the creepiest scene to me was at the very end where he's seeing the souls of the people that that, lo that died in the war. And Griffin's acting like all messiah to everybody, but... Yeah, right. it's like the fucking Antichrist, man. <laughs> it's like, damn, Griffin. Well, unless Kentaro Muta is trying to make guts into, like, the, the evil figure, but I don't know. I mean, Griffin does I mean, have the... Perfect. 
comment somewhere saying, uh, you know, Griff has done nothing wrong. Guts had it coming for him because he's an asshole. No. I'm like, <laughs> even if he was an asshole, I don't really think he deserved a lot of the things that yeah. came to him. I mean, Griffith, I mean, he sacrificed everybody and doesn't care about the band of the Hawk that passed away. And he, he would sacrifice all of his new mem- new band members <laughs> if they got in the way. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not a good thing either, the fact that he has an apostle army. And, and obviously later, where he does all that uh, shit with the Kushans and brings, you know, all the fantasies into real life. Is it just fantasy? Not with Griffith. <laughs> he makes it reality. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's about it. I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> I don't know. My mindset has just been so stuck on working on these videos for like the longest time. It's like, you know what? All I thought about, you know what? I want to make this superhero vid. I want to make it now, even though there's a lot more to do. I mean, at least that's good. I have like, let's see, I have four scripts of for videos for videos that I want to make before I make a May, and then I have like at least like five other scripts already to go for a Mecha May. Oh well, yeah, just I need to recording gonna... and editing and yeah. footage, and all that shit. Oh well, yeah, did you ever watch Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot? No, no. Uh. I didn't. I didn't get time. Oh. Yeah, because I just remembered that when I was editing the video, because I was like, oh, yeah, I need to mention Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot, and I'm kind of wondering, like, hmm, does anyone else know about this show? <laughs> yeah, I was actually remember, like, I wanted to watch it, I actually forgot what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, anyways, I, I guess we'll just head to the big conversation, the big one. You know what I want to talk about, right? That doesn't sound so convincing. <laughs> not, no, because I'm thinking, like, okay, we're just going to skip your academia. Well, what happened in the last episode? <laughs> I don't know why, we're so <laughs> forgetful lately. I don't have well, no, no, I, that, I remember what happened in the, that episode. Izuku, yeah, that, Izuku won the race. Piece. There we go. Izuku won the race. I'm, for, I'm forgetful right now, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I forgot about the other two, but the Hero Academia one, I remember. Because, like, I remember like, after that episode, like, I immediately messaged one of my friends. I'm like, holy shit, that was better than the manga. Yeah, Izuku, you know, he made the jump. He made the jump, and he made number one. He made it to the race. He Probably made it to the so. end. <laughs> yeah, and then fucking, um... Oh, I forgot his name, but <laughs> Great Balls, <laughs> you know, he made... <laughs> he hitched a ride. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I got the girl, I got the busty girls back. They have only could get the front. <laughs> great boy. Yeah, it's great time. <laughs> <laughs> great big time. Yeah. <laughs> great ball of girls, though. <laughs> yeah, it's great balls deep. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but really, that's all that happened in that episode. Yeah, yeah, I guess. It's like, shit, we should, like, rewatch everything and then talk about it. I know, like, Todoroki and Bakugo, they were just, like, behind, and then uh, Ida only barely mentions that my brother may be watching, so that's a little foreshadow for later in the arc for Stain. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, that was basically it. I don't know, I want to say that's more exciting than the manga, but at the same time, I can't help but think that it's a little sl- maybe slower i don't know either that or they're just uh well then again i appreciate it they take the time to spread out a lot of the characters since they they need all the screen time they can get <laughs> but yeah i don't know lately everything's been kind of like simplified for us we're just like yeah i don't know we know what's going on. It's not like... I don't know, even Tiger Mask, we're, we're not in our ranting mood or in our praise mood. It's just sort of like in the middle. It's that slump part of Tiger Mask double. The slump. Yeah, and then Berserk, I'm like, well, none of the troll stuff until happens until, like, the next couple of hours, I think. Here come the trolls. I'm wondering how the trolls are going to look, though. Uh <laughs> It'd be kind of interesting. They could just somehow, like, pull the graphics straight from the PS2 game. <laughs> but no, nah. like yeah, but yeah, either that or the PS4 version. But yeah. Oh, anyways, the big thing. 
All right. Oh. Since you don't seem to know what I'm talking about, let me give you a hint. You know, I, know. I know. Oh, now you do. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I knew. I was just like wondering. So I'm like, oh, okay, we're just gonna skip back to academia. Then. Like, oh, that's fine. But, yeah, well, yeah. I know what you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Jack, I'm joking. <laughs> Wait, who? <laughs> samurai Jack. Oh, it's Samurai. <laughs> Very close. You know what? We should talk about that first. <laughs> yeah, it, it relates. It relates from one samurai to the other. But, yeah, this episode of Samurai Jack that was actually pretty interesting because. Shit, it was, um, Jack says, like, what do we do to stay? We do nothing. What? <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> oh, but but once again, going in the berserk route at the very end of the episode, it's like, hey, instead of trolls, we got these little people. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Muppets. Oh. Yeah, the Muppets. <laughs> and, of course, the, the very end with, you know, like, it's time to go, Jack. Yes, let's go. <laughs> then I'm like, go away! Oh, don't end the episode here. Yeah, oh, I know. I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you ending right there? And then like, the beginning of the episode of the Scotsman. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost forgot about that for right now. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, that yeah. happened. But, you know, it annoys me because, like, the dialogue that he was saying to Aku was sort of something I thought about in a story of mine as well. Oh. Yeah, about this, like, the main villain, like, being a coward to go face the main hero himself. That's why he sends all the other henchmen. Even though he's pretty capable, and then uh, basically this one one assassin was telling him off, like in his office. Yeah, he was gonna have like a, a cigar in his mouth and all that shit, just telling him like, like you're a coward, you're not a man. <laughs> but yeah, the Scotsman though, like, but they say that they're all his daughters, and I'm wondering, does he mean like literally they're all blood related, or you know, all the surviving, you know, clan? Became his daughters, or I don't know. That's what I'm kind of wondering too. I'm like, either Scotsman got really busy, or <laughs> or maybe you know his wife was the one that was really busy. <laughs> oh. I meant with him, not you know one on one, not yeah, like with okay. not with you know the rest of the <laughs> like the wife, you know the wife wanted it. <laughs> the wife wanted it, so he took the Scotsman all night long. <laughs> It's like shit. Maybe all the sperm cells like made it <laughs> into the egg. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but yeah, the fucking Scotsman. You know, he's got a wheelchair, but that's not stopping him. He's still. <laughs> well, it's, in a sense, it kind of did. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but once again, Aku, as merciless as he always is, like one side comedic, one side ruthless. I kind of got pissed off, though, because, like, I remember for that scene with the Scotsman, I was, like, on YouTube, and there's, like, one video just spoils the fuck out of it, and I was, like, so pissed off, and I'm, like, I'm, like, no, they didn't do that, like, no, and then I go watch the episode, I'm, like, they're not gonna do it, and then it happens, I'm, like, oh, fuck. Yeah, but, no, but it's okay, because he's, a <laughs> he's one with the four. <laughs> Yeah, what was it like? Elk or elfin magic or? Oh yeah, Celtic. Oh, there we go, Celtic. I was way off. <laughs> I was way off. Yeah, I should have just thought of Celtic guardian, and <laughs> that would have reminded me. But yeah, Celtic magic. So he's still there. He's a stand. <laughs> He'll be Jack Stand. <laughs> oh. But yeah, they said yeah they said they're gonna look for his sword so. All hope is not lost yet. Yeah, I mean Jack would like hope is pretty lost at the end of the episode, which is kind of ironic since he's really encouraging her. Like, no, there's good in the world, and he's like, no, we're not gonna do anything about it. Fuck that. Fuck it. But then I'm also curious about the tree thing. No. Yeah, because he said that's the only tree left, and I'm thinking, well, then how are we all breathing? <laughs> Wait a minute. If I'm like, wasn't there trees in like in the first? episode or two I, I think he meant for that type of tree like it was a beautiful forest oh. and just to prove his point like that he could just you know Aku could just do whatever mm. just let one tree cause you know it was, like, it was a pretty tree <laughs> I will destroy this forest except for one to remind you your weakness samurai <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Like, like Aku doesn't like pretty trees yeah. but he 
Chopper's ugly trees. Because <laughs> they resemble me. <laughs> I was gonna say, because like at certain points, he just looks like a tree anyways. <laughs> yeah, he's like a big giant tree. He's the true tree of evil. <laughs> tree of might. The tree of might? Yeah. <laughs> Tree Mike should have been. <laughs> Aku. Well, technically he was a tree at first, or at least when he first popped out of the out of the water. Right. Yeah. Well, speaking of Aku, actually, I am kind of intrigued that they're taking the direction that he that he seems to be scared. That they're implying that he's scared of Samurai Jack. So maybe, maybe just like Jack, he just gave up on trying to kill him. <laughs> yeah. They just both gave up. It's like, why are we fighting anymore? It's like, ah, oh, let's just, let's just not. <laughs> From his point of view, he pretty much, you know, he technically won. Yeah, he already conquered everything, so I mean, like, well, actually, he kind of has won yeah, for. Like, as long as it's... <laughs> He's probably like won for over thousands of years or something, if you think about it, because I mean, yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's been winning. So it's like, as long as he just doesn't see Jack, he's. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> I win by default. <laughs> I don't see Jack, therefore I win. <laughs> yeah, or maybe you can get the mighty Magisaur to take on Aku. <laughs> what did that make for a weird crossover? That would, especially since Bamber has like the same voice actress as like the daughters of Aku and shit. Yeah. That would have been a plot twist. Yeah. Actually, I found his, his Jack's design funny, the one he's wearing the hat and all that. Oh yeah, I'm like, what's up with these pimp clothes, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, samurai pimp. Watch out! And... I remember, like, someone was saying it, like, I forgot one video, I think it was maybe on the Pizza Party podcast, but they're somewhere, and they're like, yeah, you know, Samurai Jack, Jack gets, like, naked a lot, and, like, oh, I realize, especially yeah. this season, like, yeah, the man just can't keep on his clothes. <laughs> Yeah. Especially that episode, just like randomly his clothes get... I'm like, dude, he just got those clothes and now they're gone. Yeah, he just stole them. You know, he stole them fair and square from all these different people of time periods, apparently. Yeah. You're still hoping good in the world. You know, let yeah. me steal these clothes. Yeah, and now she's gonna get some spotlight in the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna see the beauty of the world. Yeah. A whole new world, a dazzling new point of view, somewhere where there's no Aku, nowhere inside, and lots of trees. A whole new... <coughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I couldn't remember much of the lyrics, so I'm just like, fucking, let me just make this shit up. <laughs> it's like, it's like now we need to see the Lorax versus Aku. <laughs> Why the Lorax? Because <laughs> he cares for the trees, man. Oh. Uh. Yeah, but the Lorax has been... gets his sword and defeats Aku himself. Yeah, well, at least that Lorax would be more authentic to his sword's material. Oh. Yeah, but... Oh, you know, if that's actually like what happens, then like the Lorax feels bad after he kills Aku, because then he realizes Aku was once a tree too. <laughs> <laughs> and he cut him down. And then he commits the Poku. So I don't have to do <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> oh, what's next? Like fucking the. <laughs> oh well, well, there is one samurai that can maybe stop Aku even with his own sword. He doesn't need Jack's sword. He just needs the Santet skin that can cut through anything. Because it's time to talk about a certain other samurai. Yeah. It is Samurai... Goemon. Yeah, Goemon. I was gonna try to think of a joke, but I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> I was thinking, like, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah Goemon movie, which... Uh, it, it's kind of odd. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess I should clarify. To those who don't know, the uh, Goemon movie has been... Released online sub only, but the subs are not like the most accurate per se. It's legible and you can understand most of it, but there's moments where you're like, "Yeah, let's re let's fix that sentence." <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, meanwhile, Discotech still hasn't announced any news of of licensing the Goemon movie, but they and they're still in the dark about the Blue Jacket dub release. But anyways, the Goemon movie actually confirms that it takes place after the Jigen movie. Right. And it also verified that the opening of Jigen's Gravestone is now the default opening for the Koike series. Yeah, I was like, I was surprised by that. I'm like, oh, so that that's how this works. Yeah, I was kind of expecting like something going one specific, but that was reserved for the credits. Yeah. But yeah, once again, it's like a two episode movie length. I know. I was kind of disappointed by that. I actually thought because like because like, over for Jigen's gravestone, they did kind of say like, oh yeah, it's going to be like two. Two episodes, but like I don't know, maybe I must, must have missed some piece of news. But I thought this was gonna be like a full proper movie. No, it was it was short. But I, the the thing is, I want to clarify for everybody listening that I, I guess we should be spoiler free first, and then go spoiler not free. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. So the, this movie is like since long ago. We were we were talking about like you know going one always gets shafted in Lupin series, and he always yeah. seems I don't know he always seems to get the low end of the stick whether it's a TV series or a movie going one gets the least amount of screen time out of all the Lupin characters. Yeah, because like he's he's either there just to do one specific thing, or he just leaves like in the middle of a heist or whatever. He's like, oh, I got something else to do. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like in Mystery Mammo and Angel Tactics, and even um, Bye Bye Liberty, Lady Liberty, he just takes off. Yeah, yeah I'm just thinking, like, why are you leaving? Like, even in Green Jacket episodes, I remember, like, in the episode where, uh, where <sighs> Jaguar, I think, I don't know, it was a cat name, where you know he's teamed up with Fujiko, and then Lupin's trying to rescue her from the house. Goemon shows up just to drop off the medical supplies and then he takes off. Yeah, I know, like, Goemon's, like, sometimes Goemon's just a tool. <laughs> He's the ace in the hole because, you know, he can cut through anything. Yeah, because, like, over at Fred, I think it was either red or pink. There was, like, one episode where, like, I think Goemon only showed up to cut some rock and that was after that he just left. Yeah, e- even in Blue Jacket, the first episode, he just dared to, to cut up, like, I think some cars. Or was that the second episode? I don't know, one of the first two in Blue Jacket. He, he just shows up for a little bit, and then that that's all he does until, like, he gets his own episode, and that's all he does <laughs> after that. Yeah, it's like, geez, Lupin, why don't you just call Goemon over to play some cards with you, man? It's like, why are you always, like, <laughs> just use him? Yeah, it's like, don't you want to hang out, Goemon? But then Goemon's, like, too, too stoic for that shit. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. No, they, they always gotta like, bribe him with like Japanese, like a Japanese restaurant of some sort. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's how they get him to come over. Like, come on, Goemon, stop being like a a uh, a wilderness weeb, <laughs> wilderness hikikomori. <laughs> come on and hang out with us. We'll guy, we'll buy you some Japanese food somewhere, and that's how they get him every time. <laughs> but no, Goemon doesn't like that shit. <laughs> Japanese or the highway. Yeah. It's the one thing that always annoyed me because not only is he like sort of an interesting character because, you know, he's willing to starve himself if he doesn't have any Japanese food. And obviously, you know, his, <laughs> co- his code of honor too. Yeah, he's like, I mean, he's definitely probably like a Lupin gang. He's like, Probably the most threatening, considering like a lot of the heists and everything, he could do himself if he really wanted to, just through skill alone. Yeah, I mean, they even mentioned that they don't want to go up against him if they can avoid it. <laughs> yeah, it's like Goemon. Like, I think the reason why they don't use him in a lot of episodes, like from the writer's standpoint, is just because he's like too overpowered. Yeah. Well, then again, then the opposite also happens where they nerf him too much. Like, there's a couple episodes in Red Jacket where, like, uh, I, there, there was one episode where they're, like, in this blimp where they're disguising themselves as detectives and then these walls are cut. Co- I don't know, the windows are covered with this metal material and Goemon can't cut through it. I'm just like, why do you mean you can't cut through it? You should be able to. And then, like, uh, 
I don't know, there's always episodes where the sword gets taken away from him by bullshit reasons, or he just can't get through this one little thing that is never brought up again. Like in um, even A Mystery of Mammal, which I guess is somewhat believable since it's Mammal who, you know, has all the money, or when he's fighting against that bodyguard or butler or whatever, and he can't cut through his armor. Right. Yeah, but for the most part, I mean, Goemon has done some pretty crazy things. I mean, like in First Contact, cut through lightning, and then in um, Dragon of Doom, he cut through a whole fucking ship, flying, like, airship. That's made out of the same material as the sword. Yeah, going on is like, even like, I forgot which movie it was, I think it was Hemingway Papers, or maybe I'm getting confused with another one, where it's like, there was this chest, and it's like, specifically like, your sword cannot cut through it. In the end of the movie, he cuts through it anyways. Yeah, that was Hemingway Papers. Uh, yeah, he just tapped it at the end, he's like, oh, I made it, I achieved enlightenment. <laughs> Yeah, then his origins of the Sunset Skins always rebooted. Like, I think Green Jacket actually had two different origins within the show. I don't know, and then, I don't know, this is a consistency with Goemon all the time, because some say the sword is made differently, other times they say that he's from a different master. Like, one episode of Red, he actually had a sensei that was alive, and then he ends up getting killed. But, but if that contradicts Green Jacket, because he had a different, you know, master there. <laughs> I think he killed at the end of the episode. Yeah, it was actually Lupin that killed him. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Shoot, shoot. Yeah, because remember, in green, Lupin kills people. <laughs> yeah. They weren't scared to kill people. Yeah, they were trying to kill each other, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because, man, like, we're, it's going to be a funny story to tell each other. Hey, remember the time we all, we tried to kill each other? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, how like, you know, I was burning you, we're jumping on cars on the highway and shit. Yeah, you chopped up my car in half, you know, we had a fun time. <laughs> Those days. Yeah, you tried to get Fuji. You remember back then when you were, when you used to hit on Fujiko? <laughs> it's like, gosh. <laughs> I mean, I think that's even more question. Like, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> that's just him every day. Yeah. But no, I meant like with going on. Yeah, because I mean, it does seem pretty odd that, you know, the beginning, there was something going on, but that kind of came back briefly in the Fujigo anime, but that's yeah. all. Samurai Girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Samurai Girlfriend. <laughs> that sounds like a cool name. Samurai Girlfriend! <laughs> yeah. But so anyway, so because of that expectation, or I don't know, we had basically had expectation that this movie was going to redeem the character and it kind of does, but at the same time, it doesn't. Yeah, it's like, it wasn't, you know, I don't think it's as good as Gravestone, because Gravestone was really cool, but, uh, I mean, this movie is good, it's just not as... Yeah, yeah, because as... the thing is, like, um, I felt there was too much of a focus on the villain, or the antagonist of this movie, which was, um, Hawk. Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, the whole movie, they were just hyping up this dude, and there's just a lot of scenes, like, you know that scene where he gets his motorcycle and all that, yeah. where he goes to the bar, mm -hmm. and he's just eating the, the ribs and everything, I'm like, did we really need this scene? <laughs> yeah, where he stole the bike, but I don't know, there's moments where, like, uh, when he breaks down the ship with his axe, or breaks down the door just to get his axes back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, just, there's pretty a lot of violent scenes in the movie, but... I just feel like the Lupin gang were like, I kind of appreciate that they didn't, they didn't take away, like, the attention from Goemon, but at the same time, they kind of really didn't do much. Yeah, no, all Lupin and Jigen did is like, oh, look at Goemon. Yeah. <laughs> look at like, go. <laughs> let's just keep looking at Goemon. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, because only have... Like, we're just training and shit. They're just like, wow, look at him. And they're just like eating food on the sidelines. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> have anything better to do. No. I don't know, maybe it's one of those, you know, manly friendships, like, no, we can't interfere with his training, we must observe him for our friend. But, I don't know, I kind of wish they established the friendship a little more than just, you know, be at a distance, like, because, to me, the biggest disappointment of the movie is that we really don't learn anything new about Goemon, or, like, why he does anything. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because... Like, it, it was mainly just, like, like, in the end of the day, the whole movie was just... Goemon just, like, getting his pride back. Mm. 
But even then, I kind of, it can't help but feel that the story could have been done in a better way or in a more different because, uh, well, then again, the subs like do interfere a little bit with the uh, experience. But for the most part of the movie, it's mostly Hawk taking scenes and Goemon just training. It's not until the very end where you get to something amazing. Right. Because and, you know, like, I want to uh, more about this like gangster family like Goemon was working for because like you know it seemed like he was pretty like a respected member there and everything. So it's just kind of like you know what's the story with that? Yeah, yeah. Like there's no real introduction because um. Even Lupin, when he shows up, like, in the black jacket, he only wears it for, like, a little bit, and then I think there's animation errors where they keep flip-flopping back and forth between the black jacket and a black shirt. Because, um, yeah. then again, like, when they were running from Hawk, you could see the blue jacket on the couch that he grabbed, and he doesn't wear it, so... Yeah, that's what I was kind of disappointed. Like, I saw the blue jacket, and I'm like, oh, okay, so like, he still has the blue jacket. I don't know. Like, okay. Goyman, I mean, not Goyman, Jigen's still in green. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if maybe the blue jacket was already over, or or, or was the blue jacket still a thing? <laughs> yeah, like, I, I was wondering about that, too. Oh, but, like, I mean, speaking of Jigen, in the, in the beginning of the movie, he has those sunglasses and he's in the ship. Yeah. Cool as fuck. I'm like, these movies <laughs> need to stop with Jigen. I'm like, I'm worried, by this third movie, he's just going to look like the coolest motherfucker ever. <laughs> He just keeps on getting cooler. It's like, stop it. It's yeah. dangerous. Wait, what did they change his outfit again? Like, what color would Jigen have? What could make what could make Jigen cooler by this point, really? What could yeah, make it? <laughs> but I don't know these movies keep on like, like, because in the beginning of the movie, when he's in like, that ship casino, and he has like the sunglasses and his hair all gelled back. I'm like, damn, man. Oh, wait, you know, I think I thought of what might make him a little cooler. What? Maybe you should have like cowboy boots. Oh, shit. Or have those little things <laughs> I'm at the. Just trying to think of that. I'm like, I'm not sure. I don't know, or maybe having those at least those little things at the end of the boot, you know. Oh yeah. Like, like that whenever he walks. Cool. Yeah, whenever he walks in, you can hear like his footsteps come in and then draw. Yeah, that's, I think that's what they're called. Yeah. Yeah, then just draw. <laughs> it was funny though in the movie when like Hawk breaks into a hideout. She gets all like, "Hey, cowboy, over here!" And I'm like, "You look like a fucking cowboy. Why are you calling him one?" <laughs> you even have the hat and shit. Yeah, then... But fucking Hawk was, like, pretty OP, though. Yeah, no, Hawk was, like... Ridiculous. Yeah. He was, like, superhuman. Yeah. Because, I mean, he dropped... He fell off, like, off the bike in a crash, and then... Even when he entered the, the building, like, you know, he slammed the, the motorcycle into the wall. I mean, the dude could take abuse. Like, yeah. when he fell off his motorcycle, I'm like, is he dead? Just gets up. Yeah, he just gets up. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna get some ribs of this. <laughs> or. Well, my ribs, I'm gonna fix them by eating some ribs. Yeah. I don't know, it's like fucking, uh. It's like a health item for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like devouring those ribs. So I'm like, jeez, bro. <laughs> you know, maybe he has some gourmet cells, you never know. <laughs> See, like, when I saw Hawk, and, like, in the previews and everything, like, I didn't read through the articles that much so I didn't know Hawk was going to be like a a main main villain mm. I thought he was like some henchman no I expected him to be the big deal like the same way as well then again y Yael Okozaki was also a henchman or a gun for hire so I guess but like I don't know Okozaki was like fucking cool yeah I know but <laughs> I don't know it's like um, Hawk kind of represents the more grisly gritty like type of look because I mean he even works on a farm I mean not on a farm but in, in the garden or the field so it was like, I don't I know I like Hawk I mean he was badass he was intimidating and all that but like I don't know he wasn't well we don't know much about him either that's the thing because I mean <laughs> with o Okuzaki like he had a lot of uh, habits right yeah and, and we know that he was involved with the whole like mammal organization but this guy, we don't know the story. Like we don't know who he works for or who was that girl that he was with. Like where was he from? Unless he works like in Mammal's mansion or something. I mean, I guess he might work for Mammal because like he was like he was like some like military dude and he died supposedly yeah. and now he's back. Yeah, so it like, could be that that he's working for Howard Lockwood, and then you know, I mean that doesn't 
I mean, it, they, he would have to because the the photos were telling him they need to take down Lupin, Fujiko, and Jigen, and which were, you know, the last surviving members of the uh, the previous movie for knowing the that secret. Yeah, turn into a fertilizer, as Hawk would say. Yeah, or compost, but whatever. Yeah, compost. Yeah, assuming the subs were right, but we don't know by this point. <laughs> yeah, but oh, I get it because he's a gardener. Yeah. He's Axes. Kind of plow the field, yeah. <laughs> but actually, I was expecting him to do something with his teeth, and he never did anything. Yeah, I know. Like I was expecting him to either like deflect a bullet with his teeth, or <laughs> bite someone, or I don't know. Yeah, I expected it to be like a little more meaner, but he's still like pretty aggressive, though. But the thing is, he, he's aggressive, but in like in a very casual way. Because like, yeah. he, like even when he sold the motorcycle, like he was doing it like if it was just like an ordinary thing. Actually, I remember he, one scene that kind of took me, but not really by surprise, but he's like breaking out the gel. He just like smashes that one police officer. Yeah, and he doesn't even look like concerned or realize that he did it. Just sort of like, eh, whatever. <laughs> you splattered the guy, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then along the way, he cut off like two people's heads off or two other cops. As he was leaving. Actually, Zenigata also had like an inconsistency with him too. Because when he first shows up, he has the hat and trench coat. And then it's just a suit by itself. And then the suit with the trench coat, but no hat. So, I don't know. And... Oh, yeah, there's that one scene where they're driving with Lupin and Jigen in the back of Zenny's car. And, like, Lupin's saying something to Zenny. He just like punches Lupin. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, no, it's like... <laughs> hard-boiled Z, man. Yeah, hard-boiled Z. <laughs> Oh yeah, speaking of Z's, like uh, like a little off topic right now is that Mazinger Z is getting two new manga. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Crunchyroll listed that they're not by Gona Guy though, like they're by two other people. One of them. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the guy does anything for Mazinger anymore. Yeah, well, I think Grand Dizer Giga was his last thing, maybe. That's but uh, they did mention that that one was gonna be like. Uh, basically a reboot of the, you know, the same origin story again, but it was going to be done by the same person who did the uh, Amon manga. Oh, that guy. Yeah, and I, I forgot what the other one was, because they did show two volume covers, but one of them had Mazinger Z in, like, a completely different color scheme. Blue chest, I think. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it, it was different. That's not much I do remember, but... Yeah, so anyway, back to the movie of Going Mon's Blood Spray, or unless they change the title... Over here. Spring of blood. Yeah, one of the two. But, uh, where do we leave? Oh, yeah, yeah, and then the Fujiko scenes that that one that one YouTuber, Tokyosaurus, was saying that, oh, yeah, this thing's gonna be like, well, supposedly the news, if it's accurate, that the people were making a big deal out of that. But I'm like, well, it wasn't a big deal. And then when you actually do see the movie, it was like, hardly anything. <laughs> that was nothing compared to the yeah. Fujiko Mini anime. Like, gosh. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, that, that was one thing, you know, Fujiko didn't get fully naked in this Yeah, that's movie. true. And then, I mean, that it, was all softcore. Like... <laughs> that was all softcore stuff. I, I mean, at least Lupin was able to touch her, I guess that's a step up. <laughs> yeah, that's, so... you, gotta, you gotta take what you get. Yeah, it's like, <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna give it to you, Fujiko. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, Jigen, leave the room. Nah, man. <laughs> it's like, like... I'll sit and watch. <laughs> no, it's like... <laughs> no, I thought it was the same word on the lines. Like, nah, man. Because I know you're not going to get any Lupin. <laughs> it's, you know what? Forget Fuchigo Lupin. You should be hanging out with me. <laughs> oh, God. That, that bridge thing, though. That was, like, the best thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the best line of that whole bridge, Lupin. <laughs> you should be hanging out with Lupin. <laughs> Hang out with your best friend, me, Jigen. Fuck, fuck Goemon, fuck Goemon, fuck Fujigo, fuck, fuck Zenigata, just, just hang out with me, man, just be with me, we'll make our own podcast, <laughs> the Lupin and Jigen podcast, <laughs> so yeah, that's the, the Mazinger Z, yeah, yeah, it. yeah, it's a blue, blue chested Mazinger, but for some reason they're like, they don't, it almost looks like it's going through a bondage thing, <laughs> Reminds me of that one scene in Death Note. Hey, I, like, why would you cover the eyes? <laughs> don't look, Mazinger. Don't <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, back to... Uh, I was going to say Mazinger Z. I'm like, Whoop, no, that's not the right topic. 
getting. Oh, we come back to it, but like. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I guess we're just going spoiler heavy now because, well, then again, we've been kind of spoilering the whole thing, so whatever. Now, super, super spoiler heavy. Okay, so right off the bat, the beginning of the movie, you, you're on a ship, you're on a cruise. Lupin is there, Goemon's there, Jigen is there, Fujigo's there, and then you know the fucking uh, Goemon's employer dies, so they're telling Goemon that you know what. Like, to redeem your honor, you gotta go... Well, to me, it's kind of awkwardly paced, too. Because, I mean... Yes! Like... That's, like, one of my biggest issues with the movie. That's why, like, I think this should have been longer. Because, like, this... It really felt off in a lot of scenes. Like, either scenes just went by fast, certain scenes should have had more impact, certain scenes were too fast. It was... <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, because, I mean, Jiggins' gravestone was also kind of like that, but I think one of the reasons is because Goemon didn't really have a new design or that much of a something that really sticks out, because, I mean, with Jiggins' gravestone, we were pretty excited, because not only was Jigen new, Lupin was new, and then, you know, you got it. well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was a new look. I, but like, even then, I feel gravestone was somewhat, like, moderately paced. I mean, this one is just, like, I don't know. It felt like there was a lot, like, some backstory here that we should have gotten for some, like, you know, the whole thing, with, like, again, with Goemon and that, that family he was working for. Because he wasn't like he was just some hired bodyguard. Like, he was pretty respected and everything. Yeah, he's got, like, the crest on his... I don't know what clothes is that. <laughs> but he had, he's, he's wearing it, basically. Yeah, and then even his sword was different. Like, he added some shit to the sword. Because <laughs> he was working under that family. Good, like, good he was job. a respected member. Even the boss... When he was like in the fire, instead of asking for his like his like right hand men and everything, he was like, "Goemon, where is where is Goemon?" Yeah, <laughs> that, that's when they leave him behind. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, like you know what? <laughs> fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> but actually, they were total assholes because I mean, later on they say like, "Oh, it was this guy's fault that he, that he died when he was actually theirs." <laughs> yeah, I know. But see, that's another thing. Like when Goemon has that, you know, that one scene. Like, you know, probably the best scene in the movie. Uh, when he's just, like, slicing everyone in that family. Yeah. He kind of takes down those two guys in, like, one slice. Like, I was expecting a bit more of a fight from them. Yeah, I mean... But he's just, like, fuck these two, and then, like, just goes to the town. Yeah. One slice, man. <laughs> it's like, dude, man, shit. <laughs> shit. Arms were flying. <laughs> oh. When they say, reach for the sky, going one means it. <laughs> Like he was cutting off hands. I think he cut off a couple heads, too. Yeah, but... faces or stuff, but then... Well, yeah, that's the appeal. The Goemon was able to go violent, but... The thing is, he also fights against Hawk three times throughout the whole movie, and the first one on the ship, where Hawk really didn't give a fuck. He, he just, like, he wasn't even looking at him. <laughs> I yeah, mean, no, he was, he was, like, he was more concerned about, like, just blowing up the ship. Yeah, yeah. And there's a second fight in the forest. Yeah, that one was, like, completely one-sided. I was thinking the fight was a little too quick. Yeah, see, that's my problem. The fights were, like, fights with Hawk went by pretty fast. And then, like, the final fight could have been a lot better, yeah, considering yeah. all the hype that was built for it. Yeah, yeah, because the second fight were in the forest. Like, uh, so far there was a, a small chase scene, but it wasn't anything too exciting. So I guess that's another example of the quality where the chase scene isn't that exciting. Like, like it was animated really well. I think the main problem is it didn't last that long. Yeah, I mean, like, with... <laughs> Well, but they were just running. Wanted... Well, actually, they were just running. Now that I think about it, because in Gravestone, I mean, Okuzaki was like <laughs> throwing a machine gun at them, or like a Gatling gun or whatever. But I mean, yeah. I, I mean... know like, uh, one Gravestone. Like that was a pretty like intense one. That yeah, was, like, movie yeah. quality shit. Yeah, because a lot of shit was going down. Because Jigen was like, like, just give me one shot, Lupin. All right, and then, then fuck bulletproof grass, and then. They had to kick off the roof of the car in order to get back at him yeah. and all that shit. And then, oh, we we lost him. They're like, oh shit, no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that was like, yeah, that was like Hollywood blockbuster material right there. Yeah. Meanwhile, in in a uh, spray of blood, he was just like riding the motorcycle. I mean, he, like Fujiko was almost gonna get like chopped. See, that's the thing. Like, I think Hawk is too big for a fucking motorcycle. <laughs> Double the size of the fucking thing. Yeah, he slows it down. <laughs> he looks too big for it. It's like when you see, like, you know, Mario Kart games and, like, Bowser has, like, the fucking motorcycle. It just doesn't look right. <laughs> Maybe he needed a horse. Maybe that would have made him look cooler. You know what? That's what he needed, like, those big chop 
choppers, you know, but like the motorcycles he'd have were like normal size. Yeah. And then again, you can't really drive a car, I think, like unless it's like a monster truck. Actually, yeah, a monster truck would have been really cool. That's something you haven't seen before. Hey, I just realized it all went back to the whole monster trucks thing. <laughs> I was thinking that could be a reference to the whole mammal thing, you know, get like an oversized monster truck chasing them down. <laughs> yeah, similar to the, the you know, the, <laughs> the the big truck in Mystery of Mammal. Right, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, okay, so that chase scene then, we go to the forest and the thing is, I was expecting a little more than the fight with Doma because, you know, him catching the sword, you know, that's fine. And then chopping him down, but the moment he hits the tree trunk, the fight's over. I'm just like, really? That was like a 10 second thing. <laughs> yeah, no, by pretty fast. Yeah. But then after that, it's just going much training, and this is where the sub problems come in because it's kind of not explained very well what, what exactly Goemon was doing. It, it just showed that Hawk had like a huge effect on him, that, you know, it was basically mentally bothering him a lot. <laughs> And it, it seemed that the training was implying that he was trying to, like, uh, dull some of his senses so he could focus on one new one, or a sixth sense, uh, being able to react faster, such as, like, you know, saying the messages to your brain to be, like, instantaneous. But I don't know, I'm hoping, like, whenever a dub or the discotheque gets it, that they give a better, a better explanation. But, but yeah, basically, the whole movie just kind of feels like a big drag, uh, or... I don't know, it's just like stalling just to get to the main event. Yeah, I don't know. Because, like, it was just a whole lot of build-up, and then even then, once we got there, it didn't feel that worth it. Mm. It was a pretty violent thing, but I'm just like, uh, I don't know, there could be a little more. I think the movie was just, like, it was too short. Yeah. Either that or, I just feel the story could have been rewritten. A bit because I think the biggest uh, problem is that we really don't know and learn much of Goemon at all. <laughs> Despite That's why I kind of wish, like, I don't know, maybe Hawk could have been tied into that organization he was working for. Yeah, like, could have been like an ex member or something, or. Uh, I mean, even with Jigen, like, the reasons him going against Okazaki, like, they were explained pretty well <laughs> because he, he botched the job. Actually, that's the thing that was kind of bothering me about Spray of Blood. It was basically like, um, you know how the Dragon Ball movies are like kind of the same thing over and over? <laughs> right. It, to me, the Spray of Blood was like pretty similar to Gravestone. You know, you still have the fact that, you know, new Hitman shows up, lose to lose in round one, you know, out of action, out of commission for a while, then come back for round two and beat him, but not kill him, just beat him. And then it also doesn't help that in the, um, once again, both of, both of them, their reasons for fighting these guys is because they botched the job. Right. You know, I'm actually wondering about, like, not killing these guys. I wonder where that's, like, leading up to. I'm, I'm kind of hoping am. that, you know, they'd come back. And also, the other thing that I noticed that it was their arms, again, <laughs> that were <laughs> lost. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I'm just kind of hoping that, like, so they're going to come back with, like, cyborg arms. <laughs> Cyborg arm, cyber axe, cyber gun. <laughs> Maybe possibly you could have like an axe on it. <laughs> chop, 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 chop. Oh yeah, and obviously you gotta insert your obligatory Lord of the Rings joke. Like and my axe. <laughs> but now the big question of the movie is that, well, to anyone still listening, basically the, the final fight scene at the end is pretty violent and it's worth watching. So, I don't know, just for any sake of entertainment, we're not going to spoil you the exact content of the violent parts. So we just leave that to your imagination until you fight, actually see it. It's only like three pivotal parts of the fight, actually, that that are gruesome. The rest aren't so much. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it was uh, definitely the most violent thing to come out of the fun anime. Yeah, yeah, especially from Goemon's perspective. Because he's never really allowed, he's never really allowed to be violent. Like even the Fujigo anime, he only did was cut bullets and make people naked. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't really cut through people. It's more like he cut through things. Yeah, yeah. 
But this one, it's like, actually, you know what would what, what might have saved this? If going one said what? one line, if he if if he actually did kill like uh, Hawk or or I don't know, already strike him down, he, like he could have said like I have cut a worthy object. Oh. You know, then maybe that would have salvaged him, but he didn't even say that. He never really said much of anything either. <laughs> I mean, I guess he kind of helped him out with Zenny Gata King. Yeah, but I kind of wish they explored like the friendship because it, because it sounded like they were pretty dependent on him, and I don't know, it just doesn't feel like established properly. That's one thing because like you know, if, you know the Fuchiko media and Dice Jenkins Grace you know, they kind of take place one after the other. Mm. But see, that's when things don't make sense because the only one that should know Goemon then is Fujiko because like. Jigen and uh, Lupin never properly met Goemon throughout those movies. Yeah. And Goemon wasn't even in Jigen's grapes, though. No. Well, Lupin does make a comment about him in the in the scrapbook where he writes a message like, Master of Only Swords, so he was like making fun of him, so that implies that he did know him somehow in between the... <laughs> Assuming Fujigo and Gravestone are connected, but I don't know, so far it seems that maybe they're not, or maybe they are, I don't know. We'll have to see in the next installments, but we don't know what the next installment is or when will it come out. I mean, it It'll took like maybe, but I mean, it took three years to get to from Jigen to Goemon. So I'm like, shit. And also, this is a um, Goemon movie. It's the 2017 Lupin, unless some something else pops up this year, which I kind of doubt. But then again, it, it was the 50th anniversary for Lupin, so maybe there's something else in the works. I don't know. Oh yeah. Well, actually, the series. Oh, it's okay, the series. Yeah. So yeah, we're in the dark. Whether the next thing will be like a a Zenigata thing, or maybe even a Fuji. It'll be surprised if it goes to a Fujigo one, but I don't know. I, I guess the next logical choice would be. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a strange title though. Like, what well, the the, like, the woman called Fujiko Mine again. <laughs> I don't know or. But or unless Lu it's Lupin's turn, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I don't I'm know. hoping this new style they adapt that one story from the manga where like Lupin the second breaks out of prison and they kill Lupin the third. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be cool. But well, and then you can kind of tie it. But uh, yeah, I mean, because there's hardly any info about Lupin the second, and I don't know, that seems like a good idea for a storyline to do. Yeah, I mean, get a Lupin, two Lupins to do that. Yeah, but we'll have to just wait and see later this year what the next, what 2018's Lupin will be about. Will Lupin have a different jacket? Yeah, will it actually be a black jacket or will it be like a different color? <laughs> will it be blue again? Uh, it'd be confusing as fuck if they go back to green. <laughs> yeah, man, it's like, where, where, where are we going? Or the, 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 the odd number out that a pink jacket comes out. <laughs> It's like the, oh. whole, the whole goal is to make pink cool. Pink jacket. Yeah, the new pink jacket, the cool pink jacket. Because <laughs> everyone always forgets about pink. It's like the forgotten one of the bunch. Yeah, like pink jacket is the one that got the, the most uh, backlash and the most inferior subs out of all the jackets. <laughs> I don't know why though. Yeah, but that's I mean, why. Okay, I get to get a big cartoonish redesign, but still. Yeah, I don't know. But it wasn't that cartoony. The thing is, most people judge it on the opening and the second opening, too. And that doesn't pop out like to like 30 episodes in, I think. Yeah, but then again, a lot of people that say that, I don't think they've seen all of Red. Because <laughs> Red is like really cuckoo. Yeah, because that's what it is. People are like, oh yeah, Pink sucks. I'm like, you forgot it was like that one episode. Oh yeah, the episode where they fucking dress up as gorillas. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah, fuck Pink, too goofy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that 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 panther episode with that jewel that just turns into a panther and runs into the ocean. Yeah, that didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. There's several episodes of Red that are just like, what's going on? <laughs> Nobody even, knows. Like, even the beginning of Red, like the beginning of Red, to me, almost felt like the anime was going out of its way to make Lupin seem really goofy. Yeah, <laughs> like Lupin's not cool. <laughs> 
Like, I still remember, I got so disappointed with, like, the eye catch scenes where it's like, Lupin, but there, alright? It was like, he's doing something cool, and then, like, he fucks it up. I'm like, yeah. why? Like, he's on the chair, and then he, like, shoots the roof, and the roof just comes down on him. Like, yeah, why? it's like, oh, Poor red Lupin. But yeah, Lupin changes every now and then. But though, yeah, so I think we're about to wrap this up because I don't think we have nothing else to say about Goemon movie. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I mean, it looks good. I guess there's that. A lot of the background. Oh, well, we found out the big animal. He didn't really fight it, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a dragon? Is it a bear? Is it a shark? It was a giant shark. shark. Yeah, it was a fucking dude. That thing was like eight jaws for breakfast. (laughs) Yeah, with Eden Bruce. But, yeah, I mean... But the thing is, I was kind of disappointed, because even in the trailer, even on the poster for going on, you see a dragon split in half. And with blood on it, too. So I'm thinking, like, I just assumed that Goemon was going to fight a dragon or someone that had, like, a dragon emblem or something. Again, that's why I thought this whole movie was going to be different. Like, again, I thought it had to do something with the organization Goemon was working for... And maybe he has to go fight them or something, and the Hawk shows up, and he's like yeah. an ex-member, or some of that organization hires to get going on. Yeah. And maybe he might fight a dragon once he gets to like, the actual final boss, but... Mm. I think it's because this is the first time, like, well, we're like one of the more younger Lupin fans compared to like all the old school guys out there. I think it's because this is the first time we actually, well, second time because of Blue Jacket, that we have an experience of of having a certain expectation for Lupin and actually knowing about, you know, these little brief traders, like, <laughs> before most people know about it. Yeah, because, I mean, Blue Jacket, we had expectations, got disappointed. <laughs> then Spray of Blood, had expectations too high, got disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I guess the best thing to say... I was by Gravestone. Yeah, Gravestone, like, well, with Gravestone, we didn't really... Do... I'm trying to remember how, how the hell did I find out about Gravestone. Cause, well, actually, you know, you see, the thing with Gravestone, I remember, like, when the news was coming out, that's when, like, I started getting into Lupin. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I just started Red Jacket when I uh, finished the Fujiko Mine anime when uh, Gravestone came out. Yeah, I don't remember, like, how I found out about Gravestone, with all honesty. I mean, it was on, it was on anime's new use that work a couple times yeah but i, I really don't you know, exactly I how i it. how like, i encountered I it <laughs> like how i got news about that series or movie but yeah i guess the point is that with going one <laughs> look at your hopes too up <laughs> to or whatever <laughs> the ex- expectations too high don't have them too high <laughs> yeah, but i mean there are plenty of good scenes here yeah there's good scenes but in terms of going on, like the best part for going on is just at the end. But in terms of character, you really don't get much of anything new. I mean, I guess he gets like a new ability, sort of. Mm, I don't know. It depends how they follow up with this, because there was no, there wasn't even any after credit sequence either compared to the previous movie. Yeah, no, I was not disappointed by that too. My like, oh, so you're not just gonna take the Marvel Cinematic Universe so, out, okay? Mm. Yeah, he had a cool song at the end, but it's it's not as catchy as Revolver Fires, though. Revolver Fires, man. That other shit was cool as fuck. Yeah. I forgot the uh, name uh, of... I forgot the name of Goemon's uh, song, but it, it pops up somewhere in the credits, the, the title for it. i would have to listen to it again, but... Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe what was a little bit missing was a bit of a style. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. It, it just felt like there was something missing in the movie, or... Uh, I mean, to me, I think it was just a pacing. It was too fast. Again, I think it was a proper, like, hour and 50 minute movie. Like, it had an extra hour to it. I think a lot of issues would have been resolved. Maybe not an hour, yeah, but. <laughs> point out, like, the two episodes. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just another 20 minutes or something, but. Eh. Well, you never know. I mean, most Lupin movies are, like, around. Yeah, yeah. Well, this one's, like, Koike's team, so I guess the Koike's team. I don't know. Or maybe they were. Well, since it was TMS, maybe they're working on other things too. I'll be kind of surprised if they like they're already That's been working true. on the next Lupin feature. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. At this point, I kind of wish like just make a TV series or something. Like that. Yeah, I guess that would be like well, that would be yeah. kind of cool to have like two Lupin anime going on at once. They got like Koi Kiss version and then. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of hoping like this. This could be like you know, and, like the gritty universe, and you got the one. 
Yeah, the you know the know. yeah the other one, <laughs> whatever it's called, <laughs> the other universe, whatever. Yeah, but we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, I guess that wraps it up for the recording. Or any last words? No, not really. I don't really recommend it. But yeah. So we got another samurai to come back this year. Yeah, at least that's true. Well, then again, it was sort of the age of the gritty swordsmen, because you got guts, Jack, and going one. <laughs> I don't know, unless they can get like four more to make the seven greedy swordsmen. <laughs> well, he's not really a swordsman, but he's like golden. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know, it's the age of, uh. I kind of know that it was sort of the age of beards, because, you know, with Logan and Jack. Because I've got such a grow beard. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like, Kentrell back in the, uh, 86 movie. <laughs> Actually, I'm surprised Guts never has really grown a beard. I think mm. he would. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, no. Um, Hawk had a beard. <laughs> well, there you go. The X-Man. Yeah, I guess I'll stop recording now.